Hi, I'm Gene Kornakia. At St. Peter's University, we believe that all citizens need to understand the importance of higher education and how it affects our lives. That's why we're proud to support the important programming produced by the Caucus Educational Corporation. In early education, words matter. Next on Caucus New Jersey. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by the PNC Foundation, which supports early childhood education through Grow Up Great, a multi-year initiative to help prepare children from birth to age five for success in school and life. St. Peter's University, the Jesuit University of New Jersey, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, MD Advantage Insurance Company of New Jersey, JAG Physical Therapy, New Jersey Sharing Network, dedicated to saving lives through organ and tissue donation, and by the law firm of Gibbons PC. Promotional support provided by New Jersey Family Magazine and njfamily.com, and by the New Jersey Business and Industry Association. Welcome to Caucus, I'm Steve Adubato. You know, by the age of three, children born into low-income families may hear 30 million words less than wealthier children. This is called the word gap. Here in the studio to discuss the word gap, we are joined by Ora Welch, President and CEO of Hope's Community Action Agency. Dr. Stephen Barnett has been with us before, Board of Governors Professor and Director of the National Institute for Early Education Research at Rutgers University. Cindy Terabush, Early Childhood Education Consultant, and finally, Beth Cooper, Curator of Education for the New Jersey State Museum. I want to thank all of you for joining us to talk about words that matter and its connection to our children growing up great. Doctor, let me ask you, you've been with us so many times before, we turn to you for insight and advice when it comes to our youngest children. What is this word gap and why does it matter so much? Well, the word gap is really a knowledge gap. So years ago, before we had universal preschool in Newark, uh, we tested kids when they entered kindergarten. Uh, average child in Newark had a vocabulary that was 18 months behind where they should have been. Uh, it's closely tied to parent education and, and family income. Uh, it's about half the gap in a child's ability that's there when they graduate high school. So when we worry about the achievement gap, we're really worried about this early learning, opportunity, and word gap. Okay, so let's talk about this. It's one thing to talk about the reasons for it. We'll keep talking about that. Help us understand or what the impact that has on a child's growth, development, and ability to, dare I say, grow up great and ultimately be the best he or she can be. Well. We uh, have children who um, need to have early childhood education so that they can have the opportunities to practice and learn. Um, the same as children who are in more uh, uh, affluent homes. Um, what happens to these children? When they, when they, if they don't have the vocabulary they need, right, which is the knowledge, what impact does it have on their ability to Interact with other people, to learn, to, to engage with other kids, to, to succeed in life. I think that lack of communication is a major impact on where, what happens to a child as they're growing. If they don't have the word uh, language to express themselves or to ask for what they want or what they need or to um, be involved in, in conversation and interaction with the world. It's inhibiting. It's very let's, inhibiting. Let's break this down a little bit. Let's give some concrete yes. examples of this, okay? Break it down. In order for, for children to succeed as they go through the years of school, they need the means of verbal and nonverbal communication. And to gain that, they have to be working with, uh, in our preschools, qualified and credentialed staff who understand how they develop those things. You know, a child isn't just plopped in third, fourth, fifth grade and now they're going to take on all this vocabulary. It has to happen as they go along. And it should be an intrinsic part of their day, an intrinsic part of learning from the time they're infants, really. Okay, and the State Museum, it's interesting. When I saw that the State Museum was involved in this, Beth, I said, okay, what are they doing? And I heard there was a program called Trenton Makes Words. Now, uh, the, on the bridge, 
in yeah. Trenton, the famous sign is, Trenton makes, makes the, world. the world takes. Mm -hmm. But this is different. Mm -hmm. Trenton makes words. What is that? Yeah, it's a, a collaboration between three partners in the city of Trenton to help um, families understand that parents and caregivers are their child's first teachers. Um, so when we're talking about the word gap and we're talking about every day building that vocabulary, that it, it happens in the classroom and quality education is important, but it also happens at home. So um, what parents do or the caregivers, grandparents, aunts, uncles, every day with that child is important. So we're just trying to get the message out with that. Um, we're partnering with the Trenton Community Music School. So music is a huge part of brain development for early childhood, so we use a lot of rhyming and repetition, and that helps build vocabulary. And the Children's Home Society of New Jersey, um, who regularly works with these families in Trenton, so they were um, able to access the, the families and the community, and um, we uh, collaborate on programming to give them tips and um, have a, a quality early learning experience. It's a 90-minute program where they interact with other parents and kids, and um, they take home a book and a toy at every session so they can um, practice what they learned at that session and continue um, incorporating those habits every day. You know, <clears throat> excuse me, for those who say, hey, you know, you don't need Head Start anymore. Mm -hmm. You just don't need it. It's, it's outlived its usefulness, and we're having this conversation about this word gap, right? I mean, the word gap, again, is how big are we talking about? 30 million, the difference between a wealthier kid and a kid who lives in a socioeconomically disadvantaged situation. When I look at our own daughter, I only try to personalize it in a relevant and substantive way. Our, da our daughter, Olivia, is in an advantaged situation. And she's read to all the time. She's in a great public school in a, in a great town, Montclair, New Jersey. And I can see it. I can see her vocabulary, how strong it is. And I want to believe it's going to have a direct impact on her ability to be successful in life, have a good Terrific life. Don't need early childhood. Don't need this Head Start thing. You guys say what? Oh, we absolutely need it. We need more funding for early childhood education. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the, one of the leaders in uh, working with children who are from low-income backgrounds is Head Start. There's so is, for those who don't know, what does Head Start really do for kids and connect it directly back to this word gap? Head Start is a very well-rounded program. It's fully rounded. I mean, they, they don't take only in consideration uh, the language. They take health, That's right. nutrition. They take a child cannot learn if they're suffering with a toothache, and a lot of children get teeth rot, tooth rot from uh, bottles in their mouths. They go to sleep at night. Oral health issues. Or health issues, right. Hunger issues. Hunger issues. And, and sometimes... Um, home issues, you know, just the stress of we families who don't know uh, where they're going to be in any given day or night. So, you know, it's very important, I think, to have children be in a more stabilized situation. When it comes to children, we don't just work with the children in Head Start. We also work with the, fam with the families. Yeah. And family is whoever is in that child's life. Doesn't always have to be the traditional. Doesn't have to be the mother. Can the we mother. talk about the parents again for, for a second here? Because you said this, doctor, leading into this discussion, that one of the explanations for the word gap, particularly in certain families with children who are disadvantaged economically and otherwise, one of the indicators is the parents or, you know, are the parents in terms of how much they read and what their vocabulary is. Could you elaborate on that? Or whether or not they can read. Okay, let, let's right. talk about that. Right. I'll well, come back to you. Parents are the most important people in their children's lives. Um, even if they're in preschool programs, parents are still the most important people. So working with parents is fundamental. Uh, parents are the ones who have the deepest emotional connection. Um, and so this, this word interchange isn't just about hearing words. You could hear words from TV. It's hearing words from somebody who looks into your eyes, has a conversation with you that's meaningful and cares about you and understands what's going on in your head and extends a conversation. It's this kind of back and forth. So mm. it's partly about the words. It's partly about the responsiveness. As you indicated, the difference in the number of words that kids here is huge, but it's also the kinds of words, how elaborate and sophisticated they are. You mentioned your own daughter. Yeah. The vocabulary she's using at age six, maybe three years ahead 
of what a lot of other kids are using, mm. and that's probably mostly due to the experiences she's had at home. You, you know, I don't, I don't like doing that in, in this sense because you, you don't want to draw attention in a, uh, in a gratuitous way. But I'll, she'll say, Daddy, that's wrong. She'll keep saying, Daddy, that's wrong. And I'll say, you know, Olivia, another word for wrong is inappropriate. Mm -hmm. And she'll say, what? And she'll have a hard time. I'll say, can you say inappropriate? And she'll say, inappropriate. And I'll say, you know, could you say a, a, use a sentence with inappropriate? She goes, Dad, you're acting in an inappropriate fashion. And she'll usually be very correct about that. She's being raised by parents <clears throat> who know that, though. But, but, mm -hmm. but here's my point. It's not really about Olivia at all. It's about what, you know, Dr. Barnett is saying. What happens if a parent doesn't have the vocabulary and or the time and the inclination and is struggling with three different jobs in Trenton mm -hmm. or Camden or Newark or Atlantic City or God knows where, and he or she doesn't have that ability, doesn't have that reading skill level. Mm -hmm. like, I doesn't have the language. Mm -hmm. Or may, right. English may not be right. his or her English second or first language. language. But what, do you, what right. do you do in that situation? Talk about this. I think there are a couple of things we need to do. I think that there is a component where we need to be educating parents about a lot of things, not mm -hmm. only you know particular vocabulary, but how children learn it. Mm -hmm. I don't think parents are aware of that either. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to do that, and I think we need to make sure that in their next most important world, where so many of them are in early childhood centers, that those people are qualified and understand how children learn, because both the parent and the, the uh, provider of care have such an impact on these children. Mm -hmm. And you know, if you're taking children who are spending 10, 11, 12 hours in some of our child care centers, those people have a tremendous impact too. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I think like in all of our lives, there are some things I've gotten from my parents and there were some things that I got right. from being with friends and we have to make sure that all area of their lives are being addressed. Mm -hmm. Talk about this, is there a government policy that is involved in this and all. When we do this, we have our other, our sister series, uh, State of Affairs, looks at government policy, public policy, and its impact on people's lives. Mm -hmm. Is there any, is there any public policy that matters here that could have impact? You know, Cindy and or Beth or, or Doctor, or or just is there public policy or is it all parents, kids, you know, Head Start? Early childhood programs. Is there anything else government could be doing on a state or federal level here? We also what? have right now. I'm sorry. We also mm -hmm. have right now. Um, New Jersey is promoting a quality rating system that they've just put in place for early childhood centers called Grow New Jersey Kids. And there's a component of that that has to do with parent education, mm -hmm. where the centers are required to provide education to parents. But this is, you know, very early on in, in its infancy. Uh, I think, you know, as far as we're talking about government too, we have to look at the fact that subsidy levels have not increased in nine years. Four for childcare centers, for people, for the children who depend, and parents who depend on subsidy to right. pay for childcare. So many of the students are, you know, in private centers where it needs to be paid for. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, free universal preschool for children who need it has not been fully funded in the That's state. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. It is Jump a growing in. trend, though, that, you know, all of this research has come up for these public discussions. And so you're hearing mm -hmm. more about governments thinking about how they can help, and different states mm -hmm. are trying different things. Um, and so I think that's definitely something that's changed in the landscape in the last five years, is you're actually hearing people talk about it, which you never, you never heard before. So I think that's kind of a, a plus. Do we get any <laughs> resistance from parents? Is there resistance from parents at all? How do they understand what you're trying to do? What do you mean? I, if they understand that their involvement in their child's life means greater success for their children. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean you're just trying to go into the home and start uh, judging yeah. what they may be doing with their children. Yeah. We only have the children for a certain number of hours, and the rest of their time is spent at home with the parents. So if we don't bring the parents into the child's life, then what we do almost seems to be at odds with what they do in the home. But Ora, what about if the parent does not speak English as his or her first language. Is it any harder to help that child improve his or her vocabulary, therefore reduce this learning, this knowledge gap, if in fact the parent does not speak English very well? One of the things that I have learned is that we start with children in Euro when they, before they're born. Mm -hmm. We start working with the parent when she's pregnant making sure that she goes to the doctor, making sure she gets good nutrition, making sure that all the things that a child who would be more fluent would get. And so um, sometimes, and 
the, the parent starts to uh, realize that it's important for them to do certain things with their own development in order to help their children. So you can't jump in at three is what you're saying? No, right. not successfully. Before you've you lost, the break, so much. Jump in you've here. lost a lot of time. E every parent wants the best for, for their children. For their so kids. whether that, that parents had, uh, for whom that English is their first language or not, not really relevant? Well, it's relevant. It's a great opportunity for the child to learn two languages. Right. So opportunity. Let, let me do this. Let me, let me uh, in any language right now, I have to take a quick break right now. We'll be right back right after this. We'll keep this important conversation going. We'll be right back. To see more Caucus New Jersey with Steve Adubato programs, visit us online at steveadubato.org. If you would like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash PhD, And follow us on Twitter at Steve Adubato. Where are the conversations going even off the air? We'll continue right now. Uh, words do matter. Uh, Doctor, you were saying there was a law in the books that says in New Jersey? That uh, <clears throat> the, our great preschool program, which is world class, should be expanded to many, many more thousands of kids. It was just never funded. This not funding what we're already supposed to be doing is a big problem. Why I don't do you think, think that is the case? Because I don't think parents know. They, they know about Head Start. They think <clears throat> everybody who's eligible gets Head Start. But the truth is Head Start's raised standards, expanded the day, delivers a wonderful program, and most eligible children still don't get it. If, ex if Head Start and other programs were made more available to the children who need it most, and we, how much impact do you believe it would have on this so-called word gap? We could close virtually the entire word gap at age five. If we put a Head Start type program in place, mm -hmm. But, what, but if someone said devil's advocate, someone said, we don't have the money for that. We got to put more money into the state public pension crisis for public employees. We've got to put more money into this program or you that program to cut fixing roads and cutting, cutting um, taxes for certain New Jerseyans. Uh, you know, uh, we, we've got to fix our mass transit situation. This is not a priority, you say? And I say, if we don't spend it on the children now, we spend it on the teenagers and the adults, locking them up in jail, supporting children, teenage mothers who are having babies out of wedlock or without any supports. We spend it here or we spend it there. There's no more important investment than these children. You spend it today or you spend it tomorrow. So let me ask you, do, do you think, investment. Well, hold on one second. So, 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 you, you, so say what you just said again. There's no more important investment than these children. But, but in the legislature, mm -hmm. Plus, there's a governor's race in the fall of 2017. A new governor mm -hmm. comes into office. And fully funding the preschool but, legislation is going to be part of that. Well, race, okay. Well, we'll see. Mm -hmm. But who is the lobby? What is the lobby for this preschool population? What special interest group, what political action committee is funneling tens, hundreds of thousands of dollars into this campaign, <clears throat> dare I say, to influence the outcome of this election? And ultimately, there'll be a new governor in January 2018. And here's my question. What sort of energy and enthusiasm do you see in this state other than from advocates like yourselves and folks like PNC? And we love that Grow Up Great would not exist without them. Mm -hmm. um, we're not, and we're not saying because they're an underwriter of what we do at Public Broadcast, and they've been doing this for years. Where's the momentum? Where's the hue and cry? Am I missing it? I can't speak to that. No, no, but, but, well, but well, it's not even a political question. Uh -huh. well, it is a question of where are our priorities? Mm -hmm. Do you sense, mm -hmm. this doesn't mean that you're not doing all great things yourself, you are, but do you sense that there is a sense that a significant number of New Jersey are saying, New Jersey are saying, we want to help our kids, even if they're not our kids by blood, they're somebody's kids, and they're getting the shaft, and we want to help them. We want to deal with this word these, gap. We want to give them opportunities. These are going to be the kids that are going to grow up, and that, and we're going to be getting older, and they're going to be the ones to take care of us. If they can't, no, no, no. you're making the that. case. <laughs> I'm asking, is the case resonating, Doctor? It is, uh, but it's quiet. And, and yes. we've got to amplify that. That's part of what I see all of our jobs what as. What do you mean quiet? A quiet movement? Well, about, if you do polling, about 75% of the people in New Jersey favor 
spending their money on other people's kids. Why? Because they want to know how are ch our children now, when they're adults, going to pay for those pensions? And yes. they won't be able to unless they have good jobs. So public support is there. I think one of the problems is that the early childhood field itself is so splintered. What does that mean? Yeah. We have we have many. We're all in these little silos, and we have yes. many different groups mm -hmm. and associations you can belong to. And I'll tell even like something like scheduling conferences, they can't get themselves together mm -hmm. to not schedule on the same weekend. And I think we need to come together, all of our associations in this state, and all of the different groups that have formed to advocate for this, and start working together instead of. It's mm -hmm. for the same thing, but apart. Mm -hmm. And that would feel, look, this, again, I don't want to turn this into a discussion of public policy, but it seems to me we've done a significant number of programs around early childhood, pre-K, school readiness. <clears throat> and I do ask the question, at what point do they feel like disparate conversations, like these individual one-off conversations, as opposed to where is the movement? Mm -hmm. Like Mothers mm -hmm. Against Drunk Driving right. years ago, mm -hmm. that was a movement, policy mm -hmm. was changed. Mm -hmm. Where is the movement? Well, we need to come together. And so do you feel that there is that desire to do that? Hey, let's get together and do this. I think there's a desire to do it. The impetus comes from the leadership and who's going to be the leader of that. You know, his start started because of uh, the signing of um, Economic Opportunity Act. It was the Johnson, Johnson. It was Lyndon Johnson, and it and, was and Martin Kennedy Luther King. And Dr. King. Yes. If without Dr. King, it wouldn't have happened. And without Lyndon Johnson, it wouldn't have happened. Absolutely. And until we can find some leadership that has that kind of impetus, that kind of strength, that kind of willingness to kind of step out mm. on faith, and until we can all come together and start to talk to each other, you know, I know about the work that you've been doing over the years, but I have never talked to you. Why is that? Because everyone's, you know. put it this way, I don't want to, well, now we're getting into everybody's the weeds, but the reality is, no, everybody. because everybody's doing what they do every day to make a difference, yeah. Yeah. to help yeah. kids yeah. grow up. Great, great. You're doing what you're doing at the museum. Mm -hmm. You're busy doing what you're yeah. doing at the museum every day. Yeah, and we're not the only ones. Museums all over the country have seen the, the need for this and have started early learning programs, you know, so there's some great examples all over the country, but they are kind of siloed and not connected to the preschool classroom or the other programs happening with early learning. Most of them are siloed as self head mm -hmm. start. You look at Head Start, nobody, maybe shouldn't even say this, Head Start no, is different. Nobody has cut Head Start. Mm -hmm. you no, know, no one has. Is that dangerous right. to cut Head Start? Yes. Yes. It's because the constituency is too strong? Strong. Yeah. Strong leadership. Strong. <sighs> is, I hate to say it. Is this a political issue or is it I don't think a it moral is. and social issue or is it all of it, Steve? I think yes. It's all of those. It's yeah. not a partisan issue. No, it's definitely yeah. not a partisan no. issue. No. The, the states that have moved furthest ahead are mostly states that have long standing Republican leadership. Talk about that. Oklahoma, Georgia. Uh, our big leaders. Maine is now moving on to universal pre-K. Here in New Jersey, we think it's Mayor de Blasio is the leader of pre-K for all. But if you, you go to Oklahoma or West Virginia or uh, North Carolina, it's a very different leadership. So it's all on, about our so kids. Hold on a second. Are you, you saying in those one second? Are you saying in those states that the word gap may not be as great as in some other states because they are doing these things? Yes. Really? So you're saying there's a direct correlation between having proactive, smart, strategic, progressive, I don't know the word means different things to different people, programs, initiatives, and policies around pre-K, universal pre-K, and reducing the word gap? If it's done really well. I think the difference... Best practices, et cetera, et cetera. Yes, yes sir. The difference in his side is that it is mandated. I mean, you know, I think that I, I compare uh, his side to universal pre-K. I have both, but my universal pre-K looks what like Head Start. What is the Head difference? Start. Well, Head Start has this, a curriculum who that gets you must Head Start follow. program. Who gets Head Start and, and who's not eligible and where's the gap? One of the things that New Jersey is very different from the rest of the states, the rest of the states depends on who is at the leadership, who's the governor. It doesn't matter who the governor is in New Jersey, universal pre-K stays where it is. And I have a lot of problem with myself knowing that there are some places where we should be doing preschool, Head Start type preschool, that we're not, because they were not a part of that class. In New Jersey? Uh-huh. They were not a part of the class action lawsuit that bought the... Now we're getting into the, okay, but this is, this is important. So well, let's not confuse this. The bottom line is this. Head Start 
programs in New Jersey do not get to every kid. This is the point I want to make sure it gets across to people. Head Start does not get to every kid who needs it in terms of early childhood education. Right, Steve? Right. Not just in New Jersey. But across, across the, the nation. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Um, this word gap is not going to go anyway, away anytime soon. We need to continue talking about it. We yes. need to continue to bring in uh, people who are working hard at every level together. We can need to talk about breaking down silos. But the fact is, most importantly, we honor and respect you for the work that you're doing every day to try to narrow and to help the children who are, frankly, um, getting the short end of the stick for way too long. Mm -hmm. We thank you so much. We appreciate it. The preceding program has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by the PNC Foundation, St. Peter's University, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, MD Advantage Insurance Company of New Jersey, JAG Physical Therapy, New Jersey Sharing Network, and by the law firm of Gibbons PC. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. Caucus New Jersey has been produced in partnership with TriStar Studios. Hi, I'm Peter Rooney. In 2006, I lost my father to renal disease. He was on the waiting list for a new kidney, but did not receive one in time. Unfortunately, so many like my father have lost their lives while waiting for a life-saving organ. At New Jersey Sharing Network, we're committed to saving and enhancing people's lives through organ and tissue donation and by informing people about this important decision. Because you can make a difference and save a life.